I'm Dave Cross. In this video, I'd like to share with you a few tips for how to get used to your Wacom tablet. I'm really aiming this at two different types of people. One is people who haven't purchased a tablet yet and want to make sure when they do get a tablet, they'll know how to get up to speed really quickly. And the other is people who already have a tablet. Maybe someone suggested to you, you need to have a tablet. So you got one, but then you're not quite used to it or it just doesn't work the way you want it to or something you're just not comfortable with it. These are tips which will get you up to speed and help you become more comfortable. These are tips that I've used myself and also have given to many people based on the common feedback that I get where people say, I can't get used to my tablet. So let's get started with tip number one. Tip number one, it is not a mouse. Yes, a Wacom tablet is a replacement for a mouse, but it's important that we don't think of it in the same way that we think of a mouse. And this is probably one of the biggest issues that people first have when they use a tablet with the pen, is they're using it in the same way they would use their mouse. Here's what I mean. Normally, when you're using a mouse, if you want to get from one corner of your screen to the other, you do this kind of motion where you scroll, you pick up your mouse, go back to where you were, scroll, 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 and eventually you'll get to the top right hand corner. So every time you pick up the mouse and move it away from your mouse pad, you've basically, the cursor will stay where it was, now you can move it back and start again. The pen doesn't work that way, and this is the biggest thing, the problem that people have is this. They take their pen and they start making this motion and they wonder why the cursor is not ending up where they want it to, and that's because the pen is absolute. Wherever you point, that's where it's going to go. So instead of using the scrolling motion, you just point. So the key to using your pen is don't think scroll, think point. If I want to get to the top right, I point at the top right. Top left, bottom left, bottom right. If I want to pull down a menu, all I'm doing is pointing and the dimensions of my tablet are the same as my monitor. So when I go to the top right hand corner here, I know that on my screen I'm at the top right hand corner. If I go to the top left hand corner and so on. If I want to go to a menu, I move along and then I click and hold and that will be the same as putting down your mouse button and pulling it down. So again, very important point, although the tablet serves as a replacement for your mouse, it doesn't function the same way as your mouse. Tip number two, get rid of your mouse. Take that mouse and remove it. Take it away, unplug it, give it to someone else, put it in a drawer, that lock it away and give someone you trust the key and tell them, no matter what I tell you, don't give me back that key. Put your mouse on eBay. I'm only partially joking here. Take the mouse out of the equation. Here's the biggest problem I see with people trying to get used to their tablet is they use the tablet for one thing like Photoshop and then they, for everything else they use their mouse. And that then the, this tool becomes a, I'll just use it for this one thing so therefore you don't use it very often. My suggestion is use the tablet for everything. If you're writing a letter in Microsoft Word, use your pen to pull down the menus. If you're web browsing, go to your web browser and start browsing the web. Pull down the menus, click on buttons, do whatever you would normally do, but use your tablet. So now you get used to using the pen for everything. That's a key, key thing that I think many people make the mistake is they don't really remove the mouse enough, they keep it hanging around just in case. And, and really, as I'm only partially joking again when I say you've got to commit to the tablet, because you do. And it's not going to take you a day. It's going to take a bit of time to get used. We've had years and years of getting used to that mousing movement. Now we're doing it instead with a very different motion with the pen and tablet. So one of the ways you're going to really help is just take the mouse out of the equation completely. Tip number three, no pressure. And by that I mean don't put pressure on yourself. The time to learn how to use your tablet is not when you have 100 photographs to retouch in an hour and you're panicking because you're still trying to learn how to use your tablet. So in the case when you're first starting out, give yourself some time, put aside some time to practice, to play with the web browser, as I mentioned in the last tip, or play a game on, on your computer, whatever it might be that's just you getting used to pointing with the pen and using the pen. Don't put added pressure on yourself by trying to learn it when the pressure's on. Pressure in a tablet is a good thing when we talk about pressure sensitivity. It's not a good thing when we talk about pressuring ourselves to learn it as quickly as possible. Tip number four, use the pressure. And in this case, I mean the pressure of the pen. As I mentioned previously, the big advantage of this 
setup here is the pressure sensitivity. The harder you press, you can change things on the fly based on the intensity of the pressure. One thing you'll find is that if you're, as you're moving the pen around here, I'm not actually touching the tablet and because of the way that it works, I can still move it around. So you don't have to be pushing on the tablet all the time. But if I were to take my paintbrush in Photoshop, for example, so you can see here, I've got a fairly big brush by the outline. But if I barely touch my tablet, look at the difference in size, how much smaller the brush is. Every time I press harder, I'm changing the intensity of the brush. And this takes a bit of getting used to, but once it does, boy, what a time saver because now I'm not constantly having to go back into Photoshop and say, make it smaller, make it bigger, make it smaller, make it bigger. Now, I have Photoshop set to pressure sensitivity. You can also set the other things like to control the opacity and things of that nature, all of which is controlled under here. So you can see I've clicked on this particular brush preset. It has this thing called shape dynamics and it's being controlled by my pen pressure. I can do things like change the keep the minimum diameter a certain size and change it dramatically so my size jitter is going to change a whole lot based on how hard I press and I can even change the angle of the pen. There's all kinds of settings that I can choose, all of which you can see can be controlled by pen pressure. So the bottom line is don't put pressure on yourself trying to learn the pen. Use pressure on the pen to take advantage of it. Tip number five, get personal. And what I mean by that is you need to personalize the operation of your pen and tablet to what makes sense for you. Don't try to let anyone else tell you, you should set it up this way. This is part of the problem people run into is someone says, you must do it this way and it doesn't work for them. In the settings for the tablet, you can control a lot of different things. And they range from the feel of the tip. You can see here as I'm pressing, it's showing me how much pressure, if I do it really soft, it means I barely have to touch it. If I do it firm, I have to press a lot harder. That's a personal preference. I have mine set somewhere in the middle, a little higher. You can, because we, we double click, you can change settings like the double click, the sensitivity of tilt, you can tilt your pen back and forth to get it to work a certain way. And you can set certain keystrokes. Up at the top, you can even tell it, I want to have certain functions for certain different applications. So you can have one for global and one for Photoshop. So the real point is you can make this operate the way you want. Many tablets have buttons on the side. You can choose to customize those if you want, if that helps you, but it, you shouldn't feel like it's a necessity. They're there in case you want to use them for the way you use your tablet in conjunction with your software. So there you go. A few tips to help you get started using your Wacom tablet. I'm Dave Cross. Thanks for joining me.